morning. I'm Jim Murphy. Uh, we're here at the offices of Grow Forward. Uh, looking forward to another great conversation. We've invited Frank Holmes to join us. Frank, welcome. Thank you, Jim. We'd like to talk about, um, about people that come visit and t tell us something, learn something about your life. Learn about your life in a way in which others can benefit from learning from, from what you've been through and what what's, has transpired for you. Uh, you and I have uh, grown up in the same city, but quite a difference in, in locations and places and history. So um, I think my viewers, our viewers, will really love hearing your story. So maybe we could just start from the beginning, talk okay. a little bit about as a little kid or where you were born and raised, and uh, let's, uh, let's talk about it. Oh, no problem. All right. Well, I was born and raised in uh, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, I'm from uh, Inglewood. I uh, grew up all over the city, actually. Uh, I grew up in a uh, uh, Robert Taylor's, uh, 47th, and, uh, 47th and, uh State, right across from uh, DuSable High School. I left from, we moved from down there. I grew up, we moved to, uh, it was, uh, it's a little complex called Eden Green. Eden Green, my first job, I was like 12 years old, it was like, no, about 11 years old, paper route. All right, we moved from uh, Eden Green, moved to Inglewood, 69th and Wentworth, back in 75, 1975. I've been living there ever since. Uh, growing up, I loved sports. I loved to swim. I loved to play basketball, football, and baseball. I excelled in basketball. And uh, I was offered uh, to come play at uh, Paul Robeson. So as I was playing Paul Rose and I, uh, I felt that's like, a high school. Yes, yeah, a high school in correct. Inglewood. Yes, in Inglewood, 68th and uh, Norma. They tore they tore it down now. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's by the uh, old Parker High School too. And uh, as uh, I was offered to play basketball for Paul Robeson. went to play basketball for Paul Robeson, and once I started playing the basketball, uh, I guess started meeting certain people, the wrong people, and that threw me off my path. So they offered you to play basketball, but From you were going to go to school. Yeah, I was going to school. You are going to go to school. Right. But they saw how good I was in grammar school, so they offered me to come to Paul Rosen and play for them. Uh-huh. Where would you have gone to high school, you think, if they hadn't offered you to play basketball? I don't know. No telling. I don't know. And Paul Rosen was right down the street from me, so uh -huh. it was close. So you uh, you got in there, and, and uh, you were introduced to some people. Yes, the wrong people. So as a uh, funny story here. I don't mind telling the story. <laughs> so as I was, uh, I, I left basketball practice. Like I say, I started meeting the wrong crowd. Started smoking, cigarettes, other things, drinking. So one time my coach, Landon Cox, uh, he called me doing this, right? So he said, okay, when you come to practice, I'm gonna make you run a bunch of laps. And when I uh, heard that, I stopped going completely. Then that's when I fell off into a whole lot of bad situations. And how much, of your high school career did you get done at that time? Like two years. Two years. Yeah. So now you're not even 16 yet or seven? You're no, I was, not, yeah, no, I was like 15. 15? Yeah, 14, 15 years old. So now you're out of school? Yeah, so I'm out of school. So that's not a good scenario. No, no. no. What'd you do then? Started running the streets more. Uh, went down the path. Selling drugs. Started getting in trouble. Uh, Let's talk about that a little bit. Because I, I think... A lot of people, their knowledge of selling drugs is either on the news or a TV show at night. Right. Okay, so they, they, they're watching some uh, crime show and there's a, some kids sitting on the corner. What was it like? How did they come in, how did they come and talk to you about it? And how did they, when, you know, how do they incentivize you to get involved? Incentivize to get involved. Well, once, growing up where I'm from, I, I didn't have a lot. I grew up. My mom, she was a single mom. I grew up without a father, so we didn't have a lot of this and a lot of that. So when I when I started seeing the, the money, that would turn me on to want to sell drugs more. And uh, actually, <laughs> it was good money. And uh, but I always, as I was selling drugs, I always held the job down. But selling drugs, it was just. It was a better opportunity, so not a better opportunity. We, but. We've interviewed a lot of uh, mm -hmm. successful business people on this show. Okay, okay. And, okay. and the opportunity and financial opportunity is a motivator, a great motivator for right. a lot of 
a lot of um, uh, activities, a lot of direction, a lot of mm -hmm. people have made decisions based on the, the potential of making some money. Mm -hmm. uh, what other path could you have taken to make a lot of money? Probably stay playing, uh, I believe, uh, if I stayed in school. You think so? Yeah, I know so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but after you dropped out of school, what other path did you have had? There was, is there another path? There would be, because that was pretty good money, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. So eventually you had to have gotten caught. Oh, yes. <laughs> caught a lot of times. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, the first time I got caught was, oh, first time I got caught, 80, 1988. I got sentenced to uh, two years probation. Didn't complete the probation. I wound up getting caught again. This time I got caught with an uh, armed violence case with drugs also. Spent a lot of time, a lot of months in the county at that time. And uh, violated my probation. This time I violated my probation. I was on house arrest, I went back to court. Uh, I think I fought this case for like two years. Went back to court and uh, I got sentenced to eight years because I had a UUW. A new drug case and an old drug case. So I got offered uh, eight years. The judge ran a concurrent. So he offered me five years on that case. So as I was leaving, I would have had to do two and a half years on that. So as I was leaving out the courtroom, he said, Mr. Holmes, could you come back for a minute? I said, yes, sir. He asked me, uh, by this time it was like April. He asked me, uh, how old would you be next year? I said, well, I'll be uh, 30 years old in October. He said, well, what if I offered you boot camp? Because you couldn't go to boot camp if you was 30. And over. I say, I say, what do it consist of? He say, uh, well, boot camp is like military. You up in the morning, you running, you exercise P10 every morning. And uh, I say, okay. He say, you might have to do like uh, four to nine, four to six months. So a five-year sentence to doing two and a half turned out to be nine months. All right, were you outdoors? Oh, working yeah, outdoors, out running? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We should run like five miles a day. Yeah. Push-ups. All type, uh, all types of push-ups, all types of stuff. Yeah, and I got, uh, I got in pretty good shape. And I was, uh, what, turned 30 while I was there, but they used to call me the old man because all the, uh, it was younger guys, and they was just dropping out. Right. Yeah, but I was, uh, I was content. I, I knew I'm uh, something that I was gonna do, and I finished. I completed the program. We had a graduation. Came home. From there, got a janitorial job. From there. I worked this job for a while, for a while, about a year. Then I fell back off into the same old routine, selling. Selling. Yeah. And then, did you go back to jail after that? Yes, I did. You got caught again. Yes, I did. <laughs> I got caught once again. So I got caught, uh, let me see, I got caught in uh, 94, I think, about, uh, 94, 94, I believe. I fought this case for another two years. State's attorney called me a minister society, which I was in the minister society. And my judge was a, a, a ex uh, police officer and an ex state's attorney, too. But anyway, so they were trying to give me a bunch of time on that, too. But the judge wound up giving me two years on that. That was a blessing again. And I, and I wound up doing six months on that <laughs> once again. Came home in uh, 98. And you stayed straight and narrow for a while? Yeah, I stayed straight and narrow for like four years. Four years. And then, <laughs> four years, started back. And uh, by this time, I was working at uh, uh, Oriental Rug Company. So I started there working there, and then uh, I started selling drugs while I was working there again. But once I left there, I started working right down the street here at, uh, at uh, Lion and Hilly Harps, yeah, Lion Hilly Harps company, yeah. and I started meeting all type of guys there again, and I'm, I'm gonna say uh, they got all the drugs. So, so once I connected with those guys, I started making real, real money, see, real money. Yep, that lasted up to uh, that lasted up to twenty. No, oh, let's say two thousand and nine. But so you did that with them almost for six or seven years? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, until I left the company. Yeah, I left, I stopped working for the company because I was making better money, so, yeah. And uh, 2013, that's when uh, it happened all over again. I went back to jail. This time, uh, <sighs> it's 
so much jail time. This time uh, I was offered uh, 4 to 15, 6 to 30. What is, it, what is that? 4 to 15, 6 to 30 years. That means the judge could give me in, in, uh, anywhere between 4 to 15 or anywhere between 6 to 30 years. That's because of my background. Because I was in and out of the county jail since I uh, what, 17, 18, in and out of the county jail. My penitentiary time, I had already been at the penitentiary two times. And at this time, you know, people used to always say you couldn't get probation. So I had called a case before that, and, my, and I, that judge gave me probation, two years probation. I didn't complete that probation yet. So when I talked to my lawyer, she said, well, you're on probation. Your background is screwed up. So it, won't, it don't look good. So uh, I told her, I called her, I said, call a 402 conference with the judge. That's when you go in and you have a conference with the judge, and she talked on my behalf. She came back to the poor pen. Poor pen. Say, judge offered you just two years. I so did. you took that. Yeah. <laughs> and how much time that. did you serve on the two years? One year. One year. So, is there an aha moment here? Is there something that goes on here that changes your life? What happens? What What is this about? I mean, is there? It was. It was this time. I I ignored all the signs. You know, and I am I I believe in God heavily, right? I ignored all the signs and. and you believed in God even earlier, yes, or did yeah. have some? Yes, I did, but I was always on the wrong path. But this time, I just felt it, you knowing my spirit. Because a lot of people, you know, they gave up on me. Oh, he gonna be gone for a while. You know, he's gonna be gone for a while. They put a lot of stuff in my wife's head, telling her this and that. You might as well leave the guy because he's gonna be gone for so many years. So, but it didn't happen that way. And when this happened, that's when I knew things got to stop. And uh, Ashley. I had to give up once. I had to stop too, you know, because for my kids and my grandkids, I wanted them to see a better man as they grow up. So, what was the path after this last uh, uh, after stay this in last the day? jail? Ooh, after this last day, I came home, sat around to get my head, you know, get my mind straight for a while. I sat around for like two months. I uh, hooked up with uh, Caps over here on Eighty uh, Third and Cottage. Mm -hmm. I went to Caps for like, uh, let me see, from that. That January, I think it was February, no, February, January 2015, all the way up to uh, like March, I believe. March, I believe. But anyway, and then uh, going to Caps, I uh, got handed a flyer about growing home. Growing home is an urban farm right. lo located in Inglewood, right here on 58th and Woods. So I went to interview for growing home as a for a production assistant. Okay, I did the interview. They called me. Did an interview there. They offered me the position. So I did that. I learned a lot there. I What'd you learn? <laughs> what I learned. <laughs> I, for once, for one thing, I, I never thought it was a, uh, when, when they said farm, urban, a farm, I'm thinking cows, horses, and this and this. So when I get there, it wasn't none of that uh, completely. Uh, so, uh, and uh, I learned how to weed, how to, uh, how to plant. I learned about different type of, uh, I never knew that when I was growing up, all I knew about was two potatoes. That's a russet potato and a red potato. I got there, I started learning about arugula, eggplants, all different type of potatoes. It was just, it was, it was just a variety of stuff I didn't know about coming up, growing up, yeah. So you truly were an urban farmer. Yes, I was. And I didn't mind getting my hands dirty because my, uh, my wife's mother-in-law, she's always had gardens and uh, she wouldn't let you walk past without doing something in the garden. <laughs> So you think working in the dirt's a pretty good thing? Yes, it is. I was, I, I was, I was just trying to do anything to just stay on the correct, on, on the right path. Right. Yeah. Right. Good yeah. people there. Yeah. So um, you didn't stay there forever. What'd you do no, after that? Uh, I didn't stay there forever. Tell I us, got, what, huh? growing home. In addition to being an urban farm, do they help you? Oh yeah, place we have. Yeah, is yes, that what yes, they do? Yes, yes. It's like uh, they place you. Uh, it's a classroom setting. Also, once you come from out. In the, out in the fields, go in the classroom, they, uh, they try to build a stronger resume for you, teach you computer skills, how to uh, do interviews like we're doing now. So do <laughs> interviews, uh, we did a lot of mock interviews. And uh, basically uh, all the stuff they taught me I already knew, but they just made me sharpen my skills more. You know? And uh, it's like a three month program. So before three months was up, I had a job in two months and I went to a uh, farm here. And so what did you do there? Uh, <laughs> I was standing on my feet for like 16 hours a day sometimes, just packing basil. 
So let's explain that to, to most people haven't didn't go see the farm tour, but that mm -hmm. was an indoor yes, indoor aqua, what, aquaponics. aquaponics. Yes, they uh, grew the basil with uh, what you call it tilapia fish. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Big facility. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah it slows down now. Though. And then they um, and so you were part of the packing. You weren't exactly doing the farming. You were more in the packing. Yes. Now. Yes. So what uh, and what transpired after that? Uh, what transpired after that? Uh, well, when I was there, I felt like it was st still something better for me. Right. And and, uh, and I and I uh, kept in touch with the uh, with the crew at Growing Home and uh, see if they could find me something better because at farm here I was only making what nine dollars an hour. Right. Nine bucks an hour. So and uh, the guy named Brad, he said, man, I think you can make more than that. And your skills, your, you know, because I was all uh, warehouse receiving. Every job I had, it was warehouse jobs. So he said, I believe you can make more money. So he gave me the opportunity to go uh, interview for Local Foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I got to Local Foods, you know, me, me I fill out the application. So, and then the part when they say uh, the wages or whatever, me, being me, I put, what, take 10 or $11. So. Teddy, he was the manager there. Then he's not there no more. He uh, looked over my application. He said, "I'm not gonna offer you no ten dollars. I'm gonna give you twelve dollars." But he said, uh, "It's something about your spirit telling me right now to hire you now. I'm gonna hire you on the spot. Just don't say nothing." He hired me right on the spot. And and so what do you, what are you doing there now? What's your job? I'm a uh, I'm a uh, head lead uh, a receiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what role has religion played with you in uh, this whole process? Played a lot. I stand my word daily, right? And 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 once I was uh, asked the question, uh, what motivates me, right? So, you know, I've been on Facebook for almost two years now. So, and I, on my Facebook page, it's, it's it's positive. I don't post no negative, nothing like that. And I post a, post a lot of scriptures and stuff like that. And I think a lot. So sometimes I come off my head and just post something that re is uh, that's related to God, you know, to the Word. And a lot of people there. Say, man, we, we love what you do every morning. You keep us motivated, <laughs> keep us inspired. And that brought me to tears one day, because I, I didn't know, hey, I wasn't planning on doing that. And, uh, and then this uh, young pastor I know, he offered me to come and uh, preach at his church. I never preached before, I'm not a minister, not. I did it, and my first time preaching too. <laughs> well, you, I've only done 10 interviews too, so we can all we're not too old to change, yeah, are we? Yeah, yeah. Huh? No, we're not. Never not too, too old, old to change. Never. Tell us a little bit about your oldest grandchild. What's, what's uh, going on there? My oldest grandchild's name is Travis. Uh, my oldest grandchild, he, uh, you know, he, he had a rough life with his mom. So me and my wife, we moved him in with us. He stayed with us for about nine years. Now, Travis, honest student, real bright. He's a... Uh, First year of college now at NIU. Yeah, take, uh, uh, engin uh, computer engineer. Computer engineer. Yeah, he liked to tab stuff and put it back together. He was like, he was doing that since he was a kid. So he's down at the Cal. Yes, he's yeah. down there now. Yeah. That's great. First year. That's great. Yeah. Um, so what is it like uh, working at Local Foods? A lot of the, you and I are the two oldest people to walk around the building. <laughs> um, yes, sir. What is it like working with all those young people over there? Hey, I love it, you know what I'm saying? And, and if I can help somebody, you know, be, through my years, my experience, right? And and I like to just let people say, I, it don't matter your age, it's never too late to get your life together. Never it's too never late. too late, is nah, it? Nah, it's never too late. You just, gotta, you just gotta want it. And I wanted it this time. I couldn't see myself sitting in the penitentiary at 60 and 70 years old. And, I, and I've seen a lot of old guys in the penitentiary that age. Right, it's too much joy in seeing your grandchildren. Oh, seven of them. Seven, yeah. yes. <laughs> Seven. Grand and and the others, you got some in high school now, too? You got one in college? Uh, one in college, no. The rest of them still in grammar school now. Still in grammar school. Yes. And they live in Chicagoland area? Yes. Yeah, right in, we we all around the same area. Good for you. Good for you. All right. Well, this has been a lot of fun, Frank, talking <laughs> to you and getting to know you a little better. I think okay. our viewers, um, you know, hopefully we've introduced, uh, opened their eyes a little bit. Yeah. about life and you know, some of the challenges in other parts of the city of Chicago. Um, I certainly, from my experience, have spent a little more time in, the, in some of those neighborhoods than a lot of my peers. Uh, but uh, I don't think a lot of them understand the, the pressures and what's going on. And, and uh, hopefully over the next five years or ten years we can 
get some of these neighborhoods, you know, squared around. They seem to be trying, you know, it's, it's a struggle. Yes, it is. It's a struggle. But maybe with guys like you helping out, places like Growing Home and helping out, maybe these kind of places can really help. All right. Thanks, thanks for speaking with you. Thanks for speaking with you Good also. Job.